Hi students, this lesson is all about how a signaling molecule binds to a cell's receptor and that signal is transmitted to its interior in order to ensure an appropriate response. In other words, this is all about signal transduction. First, we'll define signal transduction. Then, we'll describe the molecules that pass along a message from the original ligand. We'll end by describing two major components of most signal transduction pathways. Signal transduction is the process by which a signal is converted from an original binding of a ligand to the receptor to into a cellular response, like turning on or turning off a particular gene. Remember the three main steps of cell signaling is reception, which is when the ligand binds to the receptor, signal transduction as that, um, that initial binding triggers other changes in other molecules, and then eventually that triggers some sort of cell response, like the turning on or turning off of a gene. Signal transduction typically involves the activation of a protein receptor when the ligand binds to it. The activated receptor protein then will activate other molecules, which then activate another molecule like a chain reaction, until a particular cell response is elicited or caused. This is called a signal transduction cascade. Signal transduction cascades are important because they can amplify an incoming signal. For example, one signal molecule might bind and activate one protein receptor. So the signal molecule is a ligand and it might bind the protein receptor. This protein receptor might activate three other molecules, with, which then might in turn activate three other molecules, which then might go and activate other things. So you started with this one signaling molecule, but you ended up with this huge cell response. Many of these signal transduction cascades involve a special type of enzyme known as a kinase. When activated, a kinase activates other molecules by phosphorylating them, which just means that they activate other molecules by adding a phosphate to them. Another major player in signal transduction cascades are second messengers. All of these things right here are called second messengers because they help pass along the message within the cell. Second messengers are small, non-protein molecules or ions that help pass along a message inside of a cell. This name second messenger begs the question of what is the first messenger. The first messenger is the signaling molecule or the ligand itself. So whatever actually binds to the cell um, or the signaling molecule that binds to the receptor, that signaling molecule or ligand is the first messenger. Two commonly used second messengers are cyclic AMP, or CAMP for short, and calcium ions. This is a description of how CAMP works. The ligand or signaling molecule, such as epinephrine, will bind a G-protein linked receptor. This binding of the G-protein linked receptor activates the G-protein. And in turn, this activated G-protein then goes on and activates another enzyme that's embedded in the plasma membrane, known as adenylyl cyclase. When adenylyl cyclase is activated, it converts ATP to cyclic AMP or CAMP. So the activated adenylyl cyclase makes a bunch of CAMP. This increase in CAMP concentration broadcasts the original signal to the cytoplasm because it activates a protein known as kinase A. So basically, our ligand binds to the receptor, which in turn activates a G protein, which in turn activates adenylyl cyclase, which makes a bunch of CAMP. And all of that CAMP activates kinase A. The signal will stop broadcasting when the enzyme known as phosphodiesterase decreases the concentration of CAMP by turning CAMP into AMP. Basically, phosphodiesterase degrades cyclic AMP into AMP. So this is a visualization of cyclic AMP. The first messenger, or the ligand, will bind to the signaling receptor that's embedded in the plasma membrane. This is a G-protein-linked receptor. When the signal molecule binds the G-protein receptor, it activates the G-protein. The G-protein slides down the plasma membrane and activates adenylyl cyclase, an enzyme. This activated adenylyl cyclase synthesizes CAMP, or cyclic AMP, and then the CAMP, in turn, activates protein kinase A. Cyclic AMP is a second messenger because it's broadcasting the signal um, that was originally created when the first messenger, or ligand, binds to the receptor. So it's sending the message on through the cytoplasm. Another example of a second messenger are calcium ions. An increase in calcium ions inside of a cell can cause different cell responses, such as the contraction of muscle cells and the secretion of different substances, or it can cause cells to ooze out different things. 
the concentration of calcium ions within the cell is typically lower than the concentration of calcium outside of the cell. This is because calcium is constantly being pumped into the endoplasmic reticulum by protein pumps. An increase in calcium concentration within the cell is triggered when the cell receives a signal that tells the ER to dump out all the calcium into the cytoplasm. And this increase in the calcium can activate other proteins along the pathway. Two other things that some signal transduction pathways include are protein modifications and phosphorylation cascades. The cholera toxin makes people sick through a protein modification. Cholera is a bacterial infection commonly found in developing countries that don't have modern waste and water treatment facilities. They cause a lot of human suffering by this little guy, the cholera bacterium. Here's how cholera toxin works. Cholera bacteria synthesizes a toxin um, known as the cholera toxin. When cholera toxin binds to the cell, it adds something known as ADP ribose to G proteins. Remember, usually a G protein is activated when something actually binds to a membrane receptor. So usually a signaling molecule will bind to a membrane receptor, which in turn activates the G protein. However, when cholera adds ADP ribose to the G proteins, this keeps the G protein in a permanently active state. So it's almost like the cell thinks it's con continuously getting a signal, so it's continually activating its G protein. So that means that the G protein is continuously activating adenylylcyclase, which in turn continually uh, synthesizes CAMP. All of this CAMP triggers intestinal cells to secrete lots and lots of water. So the cells lose water to their environment, and this results in lots of diarrhea and dehydration. Another thing that's part of some signal transduction pathways is a phosphorylation cascade. We've discussed these briefly already. Remember, a kinase is a protein that adds a phosphate to another protein, which activates it. Signaling may involve a chain reaction of kinases that phosphorylate one another and other molecules, resulting in an amplification of that initial signal. So you might get one signal that binds to a cell, and that causes the cell to activate a kinase, but then that kinase in turn activates a whole bunch of other things. Here's an example of a phosphorylation cascade. Remember, a phosphorylation cascade involves the initial activation of one or two kinases, which each in turn activate other kinases, which in turn activate other kinases, and so on and so on. Remember, this serves to amplify the initial signal. So your signaling molecule binds to the receptor, and then the receptor in turn activates a kinase. This one kinase can activate another kinase, which can activate another kinase, which activates another kinase, which can activate other things. This is your phosphorylation cascade. So that's all for now. Rewind and review as you need. Thanks for watching.